Hey everyone, the fly I'm gonna be tying for you today is my high and dry hairs ear and olive. I came up with this pattern because I wanted a, a small fly that I could still suspend a two and a half or a two three bead. Uh, and this is a size 16. So I use this fly a lot anytime I need any delicate dry dropper work done, you know, crystal clear, low conditions, maybe calm, side uh, bank lies, things like that where you just gotta, the beauty about this fly is you can cast it in there and it leaves a very small imprint when it hits. So it doesn't, uh, you don't, it doesn't land with a splat and uh, you can be really, really stealthy with it. So it just really, really shines anytime you need to do that delicate dry dropper work. So let's, uh, let's get a hook in the vise and let's tie one up for you. So the hook I have in the vise is a Dohiku 644. This is a size 16. Day in and day out, I'm using a size 16 on this pattern. I really like the Dohiku. This is a, uh, this is a nymph hook, but I really like the, uh, the wide gap on it. My thread is a UTC 70 in olive. So let's go ahead and start the thread. Now we're gonna put a trailing shuck on this hook and I'm gonna show you how I do my shucks. I, um, I'm using uh, Ginger Zelon and I take one strand out and usually you see people put shucks on like that. And what I don't like about that is it kind of frays out. Um, if you've ever seen a shuck floating down uh, the current, um, they really stay intact. I mean, they have that conical shape and. And when the nymphs bust out of the shuck, the, the shuck stays intact. So we're gonna make our shuck look like that. So what I like to do is I'll pull off maybe approximately six fibers or so, okay? Now we'll go ahead and line up the tips, spin the thread counterclockwise because it's gonna jump back and we'll go ahead and capture them on there. So now we're gonna double this over and we're gonna keep it about the length of the hook, maybe slightly longer. It's okay if it's a little longer. Now you see that uh, the doubling over and you've got uh, this loop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this loop and we're gonna grab it and we're gonna twist it towards us. So if we're tying towards the camera, you wanna twist it towards you in the opposite way. So we're gonna twist it, and you can already see what's happening there. So we're gonna twist it towards us and go down the hook shank and just stop and grab it again and twist it and do that a couple times. And I like to go down the curve of the hook a little. And you can see we have that really nice looking shuck there. It looks really good. Go ahead and clean this up and advance the thread. Make sure it's flat about halfway up. We're gonna double it over and we're gonna go back down. And this doubled over thread, we're gonna spin it and that's gonna be our ribbing on the fly. So the hair's ear that I use is Troutline Mad Rabbit Dummy, Dubbing in Olive. This is my favorite hair's ear. It dubs on really, really thin. So <clears throat> we are gonna put a thin noodle on and don't overdub it. We're gonna put about maybe three quarters of an inch on, no more than that. Now, I said this before, in order to have every fly look the same, you gotta use the same thread wraps, you gotta use the same dubbing lengths, CDC, et cetera. So one helpful hint is, this is my uh, Petijon tool, my CDC clip. I've got markings on here and that's a, they're quarter an inch, they're a quarter inch each. And if I measure it real quick, that's about three quarters of an inch of dubbing right there. And I know on a size 16, that's gonna be perfect. So make sure it's nice and thin. And now we're gonna take that up and you can see it stops right about the halfway point, which is perfect and where we wanna be. So each and every time I know that that amount of dubbing takes me up to the halfway point. Let's put a half hitch in there. We're gonna take our spinner. 
Let's spin that tight and let's make a nice rib up. I wrap it around one, two, three times. Four for good measure. And then we'll cut this off. <clears throat> so for the next step, we're gonna put our CDC wing in. This is done color CDC. Now what's important is uh, we're gonna put uh, five CDC feathers. We're gonna stack five CDC feathers. And that's the key to this. I mean, it is called a high and dry. It's gonna keep it high and dry. Well, the body is gonna be underneath the surface, but it's gonna float really well. So you wanna make sure, you know, really be particular about your CDC feathers here. You can see this is, has a thin stem. It's got really good webbing. So go through your bag of CDC and really pull out the really good feathers. I mean, if you go through here, you can see there's a big difference between this feather and this feather. This is just much nicer. So just be real discerning about the feathers you want. So now when we put our wing on, you can see it curves. That's up, that's down. You wanna make sure the wing is all curving down. So we're gonna take five feathers once again, and we're gonna stack them and make sure the tips are aligned. So I've just stacked five feathers here and I've line, aligned the tips. So you just want to stroke them back here, make it look nice. And now I'm going to stack this and I'm going to have it go just past the hook bend, maybe halfway between the hook bend and the end of the shuck. Counterclockwise spin that thread. You can see it jumps backwards and we're going to do a pinch wrap. And a pinch wrap is just going around once and lifting up on the thread. You can do it twice and lift up. So that looks really good. One more round. And now I'm going to put a couple in front. We're kind of doing a jam knot. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to switch hands and I'm going to take the thread and I'm going to stick it behind the wing. That's really important. It gets it out of the way here. Now we're going to cut this at an angle. And cutting it at an angle makes it really easy to clean it up here. So we're gonna go ahead and just clean that up a tad. All right. So now for the next step is we're gonna put on a post so we can see that. I like to use white pair of posts. You can use whatever color you want, uh, pink, whatever shows up well for you. White works particularly well for me. So. I'm cutting off a strand here. Now that's a whole strand. And what I don't like to do is a lot of people will take the post and stick it in like that. What I, the reason I don't like to do that, it forms this big hump. You can already see a hump there already. It just makes it larger, but I like the way I do the post. So I'm gonna take one strand and we're gonna you know, eyeball it and cut it in half there or pull it in half. Now just take it, put it underneath the hook and we're just gonna pinch it there, okay? Now, go in front of it, let go, go behind it, in front of it, behind it. And you can see it just stays there. So you can see it just stands up really nice and neat. Let's take the thread and go behind it again. <clears throat> now, I'm just gonna take a little pinch of hair's ear and we're just gonna put it, just a real little pinch and we're just gonna put some here just to give, we're gonna put a CDC uh, loop on here and then we're gonna put CDC on the front there. And what it does, that hair's ear, just gives it something to grab onto. So for the next step here is we're gonna take two more CDC feathers and we're gonna put it on our clip. And once again, you can see I have the measurements on there and we're gonna have about an inch of CDC. And that's really important because on a size 16, 
this is going to give you how much you need. So counterclockwise spin that thread. What it's going to do is flatten it. You can take your bodkin and when you start stroking it backwards and you let the bobbin go, you can see it starts flattening out and you can grab it with your finger there and then you can just split it. Take the CDC, stick it in between the thread. You can just pull it, get it into place. Now, lay, lay the thread over your finger and spin it clockwise. And when you start easing up the tension, you can start seeing it. it's, it's starting to cord up like that. Now grab it above the bodkin, or I'm sorry, above the bobbin, pinch the thread, and then push up towards it. And you can see it spins really nice and you have all this really nice CDC. Now, here's what you need to do. We need to pull this wing back and you need to keep using, you're hitting the camera there, you, you gotta use your non-dominant hand and just keep wrapping the thread up against the wing until you get to the CDC. You can see the wing starts propping up. Now we're going to take two wraps behind it. Once again, tight to that CDC, two wraps behind it. And you can see how that wing is really propped up now. And then we're going to go in front of it once, twice, one more time, and then we're gonna spin right in front of it. And you can see that one inch of that CDC, we we're able to work all the way towards the eye of the hook. It didn't even crowd it out. Now I just keep pressure on it, and I like to finish my dry flies Dave Whitlock style. I don't use a whip finish. I will just put super glue on my thread Pull this CDC out of the way, and we're just going to crank around it. And I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. And that is not going anywhere. Now, right here at the end, I'm going to take this post, and I kind of eyeball it right there. Cut it even with the wing. And you can see it looks pretty darn good. Now you see here at the bottom, it's all shaggy. I actually like it that way because when this thing lands on the water, the legs just kind of fan out. It looks really fishy, but you can trim this up and make it flat if you want to. The fish will always tell you what they want, but that is, I don't mind these flyers at all. I actually think it's really fishy. So once again, there is your high and dry hair's ear. Uh, this is, uh, like I said, this has become my go-to uh, light dry dropper. Um, anytime blue wing olives are on the water or when we're in those uh, low crystal clear conditions like we are in the winter time or uh, late summer, early fall, uh, this has really become the go-to. So um, I hope you spin some up. It definitely deserves your place in your box. I know you're gonna catch them on this. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Happy to help you out. And once again, everybody, tight lines. I'll talk to you later. Bye.